Hello, this is a brief tutorial on setting up a camera to do an animation in 3D Studio Max. Here is a quick rendering of the first frame and what I will do is set up a scene to do about um, 15 to 20 seconds of animation moving the camera around following this car as it parks in the garage. So the first thing that I'll do is select the car and add a dummy to the scene. A dummy is a helper found in the standard set of helpers and the dummy will help me control the movement of the car and I'll put it at the back and I'll keep it on the the base there. I'm going to link the car which also has the wheels linked to it. I will link the car to the dummy and now I should be able to move the dummy to move the car. So over a period of several seconds this car will move into the garage. So let's go ahead and set that up. To adjust the end frame of the timeline use your control and alt keys and right drag, right mouse button drag. I'm going to turn on auto key and then move ahead in time at about five seconds so assuming 30 frames per second I'm going to move the timeline up to 150 and then move the car and you're going to see a key created at the very beginning and another key at 150 and now I'm going to turn the car into the garage over about two seconds I'm using the rotation transform with the angle snap on. So now what's going to happen is that from frame 0 to 210 it's going to rotate slowly and this is not what I want. So I want to be able to get the rotation value the same at frame 150. A couple ways to do this. One is to simply move it back but if this is troublesome because of the interpolation that the computer makes between frames 0 and 10, then we can use the curve editor. The curve editor will allow me to copy the keys from frame 0 up to frame 150. And what I want to do is copy the rotation keys only. And in this case, I'm only going to copy the XYZ rotation, select, and then shift drag, and then use control key to land at 150. Control key allows me to constrain it along the value of zero. So now it goes from being straight, going through that key, and then turning. Now, of course, it's turning too soon, so I'm going to split the difference between 150 and 210 at 180. I'm going to move and rotate this car under the motion panel I can turn on trajectories and see the path. The four white boxes are my keyframes and the small dots along the red line are the frames. 
and the computer does the interpolation between the keyframes. Now at frame 0, there's some natural acceleration that's happening. Let's go to the camera view and sh see the acceleration that takes place, which is something that I don't want to happen. So I, I want to go back to the curve editor and this position is going to be edited. The position keyframe at zero, I'm going to make that look more linear. So I sweep over the keyframe and move the control up so now I have a linear path. Now I have steady movement and the car slows down a little bit and turns in. If I right click on the timeline and configure show selection range I can now see a bar which allows me to select all the keyframes or part of the keyframes and scale them appropriately. So in this case I'm going to scale it down to about 80 percent of what it was of the amount of time it originally consumed and scale it back so it goes more quickly. Alright, so now for some camera animation. First I'm going to have the camera show us a shot from a distance and then we'll move the camera to follow the car and then we'll do one last shot to watch the car go into the garage. So a three camera move. I'm going to turn on auto key and at frame zero I'm going to adjust the key and put the car out of the scene and play it for you. So from 0 to 60 we're going to do a small dolly into the scene. So with auto key on at frame 60 I'm going to zoom in slightly at frame 0 I'm going to adjust the position of the camera so now from frame 0 to 60 I zoom in while the car also enters the screen. Now I'm going to animate the camera target and at frame 60 I'll move the camera target toward the car. So as soon as you move ahead in time and make a change in the movement, rotation, or scale of an object, it will automatically make a key at that frame plus a keyframe at the beginning. So now we're dollying in and slightly moving to the left with our target. Now at frame 61, I'm going to go to the top view and I'm going to move both the camera target and the camera. I'm going to hit C, Control R, and move down, Alt Z, zoom in, middle mouse drag, and I've panned to a spot that I like. Now, I'm going to see how far the car goes, and about right there, about 130, I want to simply move the camera and the target to follow the car. Now, there's a curve in this line and there's some acceleration that takes place here. So now I'm going to set up my third shot and then go back and fix the acceleration and the curve and make these paths linear. At frame 131 I'm going to do a new 
camera position sort of above and back behind the car C, control R and I'm just going to pan over as it goes in and so at frame 180 I'm going to simply move the camera over and cross the camera path with the camera target path. I've discovered that it would look a little bit better for this car to go in further. I can turn on key mode toggle with this button and jump back to the last keyframe and push that car in a little bit more. Now what I should also do is check the speed you can see the individual frames along the red path and how it slows down around the curve, speeds up a little bit, and then slows down. What I want to do is actually add more time, around a half a second more. Now there are more dots along this line. So from the camera view, I have three shots. I'm going to play it and then work out the kinks. Okay, very rough animation. Camera's jumping everywhere. So now I'm going to go to the select from scene dialog, choose the camera and its target, and then go to the curve editor and make these paths linear. So this is the position and rotation of the movement of the camera and target. For this particular scenario we have just the position since the rotation has not been animated. If I select all those keyframes by marquee all of the curves I can choose set tangents to linear and now I have clear linear paths. If I hit play, it'll be a little different. So we move in, jump over, follow the car, and we jump up to a spot above the garage. So now I'm going to turn on auto key, go to frame 130 by jumping ahead with this arrow and do a slight adjustment. What I'd like to do is select the camera target and move it at frame 130 at an existing keyframe, and that's very important, to try to minimize the number of keyframes you have. You should still use as many as necessary, but minimize them as best you can. And I'm also going to raise the camera just a little bit at that same frame. So now that shot's just a little different, and it introduces the shed, or the garage, a little bit better. Now these individual clips could be taken out and blended better in something like After Effects, and even the video post controls allow you to do something like that within 3D Studio Max. So now I'm going to take another minute and set up the rendering for this scene. So I want to render from frame 0 to about 190. 6 and 1 3rd seconds. I'm going to render at frame 600. Uh, width of 600, height of 450. From 0 to 190. And I want to save the file. Here's the frame range, 0 to 190. I'm going to render every second frame at 600 by 450 and I'm going to save the file as a movie file. Now I can hit render 
and frame by frame I can watch the rendering happen and then watch the movie afterwards so the final resolution for this project for my class will be twice this and this is the idea behind rendering draft movies so if you had a 1200 by 900 final resolution then half of that would be 600 by 450 and there's no reason if you have a complicated scene and shadow casting lights and a lot of detail to render every frame so rendering every second frame is great for a test. So here's the movie file and I'm going to play this. Since it's every other frame it's playing at 15 frames per second. Now of course the movements are quick and the animation was done also very quickly. This is a tutorial mainly to show a few basic techniques behind timing camera moves and how to set up a camera to be used for multiple shots without setting up multiple cameras. Okay, I hope that was helpful and enjoy your animation.